These are the jewelries I've made using seashells and gemstones. I have a few drill bits here that I use to drill holes through the seashell. This is a cylindrical center diamond drill bit and it's about 1.2 millimeter in size and I found this is just perfect for accepting a 16 gauge wire and if I need to make it a little bit bigger than 16 gauge then I can just work around on the edges pushing outwards to make the hole a little bit bigger. So this one's got a carbide tip and this is ideal for making pilot drills. This is a conical drill bit. This is a carbide burr. I use this for the small rhinestones like this piece here. So I drilled through the shell so I can let light through the hole but also I need to have as much gluing area as possible So the conical burr is perfect for this part of this pendant. So drilling holes is just a matter of putting the drill onto it and sometimes if it slips you might need to drill a pilot hole. So I need to mark this with a pencil first. I'm just going to the back as well just so to even it out on the most scale of hardness shell has got a hardness of about three and it is quite easy to drill through and these pieces here I have to drill a few spots so I've got one two three four areas or spots where I drilled through so this one I've got two one for the bale and that one is for stabilizing the wire so it doesn't wobble all over the place there's no specific glue to use. It would have to depend on the design of the jewelry. For these projects, I've used both E6000 and Loctite Super Glue. It's a case of different horses for different courses. For this piece, I use E6000 for the bigger stone. And also, this area has a little ledge where the stone can sit at the back there. So the E6000 is more suitable for this part of the abalone shell which requires a lot of glue. So as you can see that's all the E6000 on the edge there. And there's a gap there as well that I have to fill up. So the E6000 is suitable for this part of the abalone shell. But for this row of small rhinestone, I only have a small area of contact with the stone and the shell when they're glued together. So the super glue is more suitable for this scenario. This one is also another example of a combination gluing. The pearl I've glued using the E6000, the metal or the brass metal around the pearl I use a Loctite super glue. Using this E6000 can be a little bit messy so at the front here I don't really want the glue to show so like this one for example so at the back there I've used E6000 on this piece as well but it doesn't really matter if the glue ooze out because it's at the back and at the front you don't see the glue at all. So with this one you can still see the E6000 on the edges there but because the E6000 dries clear or transparent, it doesn't really matter in this scenario. Also this one, although this is a big piece of Australian jade or chrysophrase, and I have to glue it on top and there's really no ledge to hold the stone. The E6000 is also ideal for this because it has a bigger surface area of contact. So in this scenario, I have a bigger surface area wherein I can put a lot of glue. So the E6000 is suitable for that one. So with these two pieces, both has got pearls. I've got wire coming through or glued onto the back of the pearl. So first I glued the wire and the pearl with a super glue. And after I drilled the hole through the seashell, so just so for added measure, I use E6000. As you can see, I still 
have a little bit here left to clean off and this one as well so just on the edge there I use E6000 as well before bending the wire just to keep it more secure and these two pieces here is just a straightforward E6000 these two are the same so that one I don't need to glue the gemstone onto the earring post because it's already been like that but I use the post of the earring or the wire that's sticking out in the back of the earring to bend it just to secure it to the shell and for added mesh up I use E6000 for the back to glue it on that part there and even this one's here I've used E6000 and that one as well I put a little bit of E6000 to glue the pearl onto the shell with this piece, this is actually a piece that I bought. I did not make this one. So here's another one. This one's got scratches and marks on it still. So I don't know if you could see that there, but as I slowly see those lines there, there's scratches and marks. And in person, as it turns, I can actually see the marks on the surface of uh, the shell. So what I did with this piece, is I just smoothen it out and then now as I turn that that is just beautifully polished and it has the same hole but what I've done is make the hole a little bit bigger compared to this one here that way I can accommodate this piece of ball bearing so it's a stainless steel ball bearing so at the back there you can see that it's actually sitting nicely there and I've used a super glue to glue this on to make the hole a bit bigger so it will have more contact with the stainless steel ball bearing that I have here so instead of having it sort of straight down that way what I've done is grind around it at an angle that way it will have a um, conical shape going all the way around to accommodate the stainless steel ball bearing so these two pieces here, there's no drilling done except for the bale for this one. So these two pieces I use super glue. And this one I have to put Loctite a few times. So for this one, you can see on the edges there, I've glued on the peridot first up and dabbed some super glue on the edges as well and stuck on those small bits of tumbled garnets 